Did you know that there's over 500 quotes from famous millionaires and billionaires that all essentially say the same thing? Focus is the number one key to becoming a millionaire. And what if this strange little graph here was the secret to removing distractions? Because that's the number one thing that prevents you from focusing is distractions. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you a system for removing distractions that has made me millions. And more recently, it made me $120,000 net profit last month on a software, a new software that I just launched. As well, I launched a $5 ebook, and from my social media, I did about six grand here, and from my email list, I did about 12 or 13 grand right here, and added hundreds of members to a membership site that I own. Okay, so the first major distraction is good ideas. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Dan, I have all of these good ideas. I wanna use them, they're great ideas. Shouldn't I do that? No, absolutely not. So think about it this way. When you are an entrepreneur, you are likely the type of person that seeks out knowledge because you want to learn stuff, right? You want to accomplish things. You got goals. So you're reading books. You're watching YouTube videos. You're listening to podcasts. Maybe you're taking online courses or going to events. And so what happens here is because you have an influx of new knowledge, this is what creates new ideas because new ideas are simply offshoots or variations that happen in your head based on the knowledge you receive. This is how science evolves. This is how literature evolves. I mean, think of the first caveman, right? He probably banged two rocks together and saw a spark, and that caveman probably thought, oh, wow, that just looks cool. Oh, that's fun. But eventually, a caveman was like, wait a minute, I can make fire with this. See, it's the same idea, but it evolved. And so as you learn things, you get these new ideas. The problem with that is that as you get these new ideas, you wanna act on all of them. And that is where this very simple process or system comes into place. So let's say you have an idea. Let's say that idea is just one business, okay? So now your one business encompasses this entire circle. And I call this the circle of focus. Right now, that idea takes up 100% of this circle. All focus is there. Now, if you say, well, wait a minute, Dan, I've got a new business idea, and I wanna do that too. You have to cut that circle in half. And so now, you are only giving 50% effort and 50% effort, all right? That's it. There's no other way around it you are giving 50% effort. You're half-assing it. So think about it. What have you ever accomplished given 50% effort? Think about that. Now, if I flip this around, here's what happens. As we add more and more and more and more to our plate, now our circle of focus begins to look like a pizza. And now we go from 50% down to 5%. The principle here is, how are you gonna accomplish great things giving 5% effort? Because in order to accomplish something, you need momentum. So you might say, well, yeah, Dan, I'm doing them all at the same time, but eventually they'll all get done. No, because what gets something done is momentum, and you can't get momentum with 5% effort. So let me give you a more practical example. Let's say for a moment that you're trying to grow a brand on online. You have a business, you're trying to grow a brand online. And you say, okay, well, the first thing I'm going to focus on is Facebook ads. Let's say you're running Facebook ads. So now Facebook ads is 100% of the circle. You're only focusing on that. But then if you say, well, now I want to start a blog. Okay. And now, well, now you're giving 50% effort. Well, okay, but I want to start a podcast to promote my business. So there's the podcast. I want to focus on my Instagram. All right. You know, because everybody's saying, oh, you got to be omnipresent. You got to be everywhere. <laughs> okay, so now we're, we're just, you know, as we add all this stuff, we're just doing this. And again, we get back to this. So, for instance, when I launched that ebook, I decided that that entire week, all I was going to do was the ebook. And I actually wrote seven ebooks because. I gave away a ebook for $5, but then there was like an upsell, and that upsell, I gave away six more ebooks if you join my membership site. That's seven books that I wrote. They're ebooks, they're short, but there's still seven books that I wrote in a week. Now, how was I able to do that? It's because I only did that. I made sure my circle of focus was clean. 
Now you might say, well, okay, what happens if I got other stuff to do? I can't just focus on one thing. Yes, you can, and here's how. So when you have a circle of focus, and you, let's say, again, let's go back to like the Facebook ads example. If you are running Facebook ads, and you only run Facebook ads, and that is it, okay? And that takes up 100% of the circle, 100% of your time and energy. You're going to eventually achieve very quickly, because it's taking up 100% of your focus, a level of mastery. Now, what is mastery? Mastery is where you can achieve great results with minimal effort. That's essentially mastery. And so if you can master this channel of getting clients, if you can master this channel of promoting your business, you can now reduce the amount of the circle needed, the amount of effort. And when you can reduce that, you can delegate it to your team. You can make a SOP or standard operating procedure and teach your team how to do it. And then you can move on to the, to the next thing. And so now it moves out of the circle over here where instead of being the only thing you focus on, it only requires 5% effort from you. And so now you can bring things into the circle and bring them out of the circle, bring them into the circle and bring them out of the circle so that your circle always is 100% focused, but now you have these things that are outside of the circle that are very effortless for you or that you've uh, hired out for or something like that. And so that right there is how you focus and do more things at the same time. Now, a quick story to illustrate this was one time I had a really bad time in my business and we were doing roughly a quarter million dollars a month for two years. And that was good for me because it was very low. I didn't, have to, I didn't have to do a lot in my business. But then I wanted to scale my business. And so I had this idea that I was going to release more products and more products and more products. Because, hey, if I make 250 grand a month with one product, why wouldn't I make 500 if I had two? I thought that was the way to go. I did that, and eventually my income actually went the other way. It whittled down to about $70,000 a month. Now, you might say, well, that's a lot still, but not when you're used to making 250. And so I ended up investing into this mastermind that Sam Ovens had held. When I got there in New York City, Sam, you know, he told me, he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take all your products and I want you to delete all of them but one and focus just on one. And I was like, you want me to delete 90% of my products? And he said, yep, delete them all. And so I did it. And what's funny is that that next month we did like 150, the next month we did 250, and then the following months we ended up doing 500 and eventually I ended up getting to a million a month and stayed there for quite a little bit of time. The principle here is that you only focus on one thing if you want to do great things. You can't get 100% of the result with 5% effort. And so the steps you can take right now is draw a circle, map out everything you're doing. And if your circle of focus looks like this, it looks like a pizza, start removing things and only focus on the most important thing. Okay, so now this next system is gonna be for removing distractions from other people. And most of you are not going to like this. I'm not going to lie. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, Dan, I don't wanna just cut off my friends and not do anything fun. That's not what I'm saying. But when you hear this, I think you'll see it a different way. Now, here's how I like to think about friends, okay? To me, friends are people that help enrich your life. They're people who give you a net positive gain on your time, meaning you get happiness out of that. You get health out of that. You get wealth out of that. You get something that makes your life better because we want to be close to people that make our lives better. These are friends. The problem is I don't think most people really evaluate their friendships. They just assume that if you're a friend that, hey, everything's good, but they don't evaluate the quality of those friendships. So if you were to take a piece of paper and you were to make a list of all the activities that your friends ask you to do, okay? Because think about it. If you are asked to go out to lunch and you're asked to go do this and you're asked to go do that, hey, come to this concert, come here, come there. Well, these are obviously distractions. Like, they are. They're distractions to becoming a millionaire unless they somehow contribute to it. If you look at all of these and you say, okay, well, I'm gonna go to this bar and I'm gonna get drunk with my friends. Is there a net positive gain to that? Does that what does that do for your life? And what you can do is you can assign it what I call an impact score, okay? Impact score. And I'd like you to assign it one to five. So we'll do one to five. 
Five, meaning it really impacts your life in a positive way. And then one is it does not impact your life at all in a positive way. In fact, it's negative or just even neutral. And so start going through all the things you do with your friends and assign them an impact score. If you're just going out to the bar and getting drunk, I'm sorry to tell you this, that's gonna be a one. That's gonna be a negative one. But if maybe you're in a book club and you're reading business books and you're learning something, that could be a four or a five. If you're just going out to have coffee and talk about nothing, gossip, whatever, I'm sorry, but that's a one. And so as you start assigning these impact scores, you realize very quickly who in your friends group is actually contributing to your life. And same thing for you, you wanna to contribute to their life. You can now evaluate your friendships. And I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but if you want to be a normal person, then by God, all means more power to you. You go and you hang out with your friends all the time and just do whatever you want. But if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be the 1%, you cannot behave like the 99%. And the 1% choose their friends carefully. They choose what they do with their time carefully. They do not just go out for coffee and talk about nothing. Why am I doing that? That's ridiculous. You're wasting my time. Let's talk about something that brings value to both of our lives. Let's have a high quality friendship, not some BS gossip friendship. So if you make this list and you just delete anything that is under a four, you now not only can free up tons of time, but you can find out who the really good friends are because a good friend is not somebody who's just there for you. That's the basic entry level qualifications for any type of friend to be, be there for you when you're in a rough time. That is like the basic. But people that help enrich your lives and grow together, the growth is what makes a good friend. The growth, not just being there. Increase your standards for your friends and for your relationships and it will increase the impact you have on your life. Remember, if you become a jack of all trades, you become a master of none. Okay, the next system your wife is gonna hate, but I promise you she'll love the house you buy for her once you master it. Okay, that was a little bit of a joke. This works for men and women, but you get the idea. And what this comes down to is eliminating daily activities that are not making you money and not helping you grow. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Dan, I don't, I like to cook. I like to clean. I like to shop. Okay, great. Here's the thing. What is life? Life is three major things. It's health, it's wealth and it's happiness. So if you are spending your time doing things that make you wealthy, amazing. They make you healthy, amazing. And they make you happy, amazing. So if you like shopping because it's something you do on Saturdays with your wife and you get quality time together, then by all means you do it. If you like cooking because it makes you happy because you have a passion for it, then by all means do it because it falls into one of those three categories, health, wealth, and happiness. And really, we should not be spending much of our time on anything other than those three. Imagine if you had a life where 100% of your time was either being wealthier, healthier, or happier. You'd have a great life. But we get caught up in all these mundane just logistical things that eat up all three of those categories. If you're shopping just to shop, if you're cooking just to cook, if you're cleaning just to clean, then we need to start eliminating those things so that we can focus on health, wealth, and happiness. And here is a system for doing that. So very similarly to the previous, you want to make a list. And this list is gonna include all of the daily or weekly tasks that you do to keep your household in order to stay alive. And you know, you might put on there uh, shopping, you might put on there cleaning, et cetera. Now, the easy way to tell you to handle this is hire a maid, hire somebody to do your shopping, use pay extra for Instacart, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And that will give you more time to focus on your business. That, that's the obvious sort of thing to say, but it's hard because you say, well, a maid, let's say a maid is 200 bucks a week, 50 bucks an hour, four hour they clean a week, that's uh, two, four, six, that's $800 a month. Now you're thinking, well, Dan, I can't afford $800 a month right now. See, that, that is what you think, but think about this. $800 a month gets you 16 hours, 16 extra hours per month. Let's just say for a moment that what you sold in your business was only a thousand bucks, okay? So it's only one thousand dollars, one K. If you have 16 extra hours, even if you paid the, the maid eight hundred dollars up front, you have 16 extra hours that month 
to make one extra sale, which would net you an extra $200 because you paid the maid 800, now you're netting two. But likely in 16 hours, here's what happens. It compounds because maybe you get one, one to three sales. So let's say you get two sales, so now you make a profit. But you learn in that 16 hours what to do and not to do when getting clients. So now the next 16 hours, the next month is more valuable because that time compounds because you're learning. So now you might get three or four clients. And the next month you might get five or six clients, makes five or six th sales. And now all of a sudden you, you're getting like a 10x return on the investment, but you, I'm gonna tell you, you have to have the balls. You have to have the balls to pay that maid to free up 16 hours of your time with no guarantee that you're gonna make it back. And you have to sweat that $800 knowing that, hey, listen, I'm not gonna watch Netflix for those 16 hours. I'm gonna freaking do the work. I'm gonna take those 16 hours and I'm gonna learn something that makes me more money. I'm gonna do something that makes me more money. And look, it was very hard for me when I first got started to hire an assistant because the things that were, were really digging up my time were things like paying bills, uh, paying the electric. I, I remember I was making money in my business. I was making like 10 grand a month. I was constantly getting the electric shut off. This was in the beginning. I was constantly getting the electric shut off because I would forget to pay the freaking bill. I eventually hired an assistant who, you know, really cut into my profits. Like, as I didn't hire a virtual assistant at the time, I hired somebody local in America. And so they had a decent salary and it really cut into my profits, but, I had to eat that for a month or two, and I had to be okay with it. And I had to have the discipline and the balls to be okay with it because it eventually paid off to where that extra time allowed me to make so, so much more money. Because it's not just the time it takes to pay the bills, it's the mental real estate. It's that stress of, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Eating up your mental real estate. And you need that mental real estate. You need that to make millions of dollars. I'm sorry, you do. And so all you have to do here is assign an impact score to all of your daily activities. You know, one, three, five, four. So if there's something that's a five, maybe it actually does make you money or maybe it makes you happy because you're doing it with your wife, fine. If it's a one to five in health, wealth, or happiness, absolutely. For instance, go to the gym. By God all means, go to the gym. It will help you become wealthier. It will help you live longer. It will help you feel better. But you absolutely have to assign an impact score. And anything under a four or five, if, if you possibly can, a five, just get rid of it. Hire it out. It, you know, do it. If you have the balls, literally pay money you don't have and go out and get that money back before the next bill is due. This is how a millionaire thinks. Risk versus reward. If you do not risk, an employee only risks 40 hours of their time per week. That's why they don't, don't get paid much. An employee only risks literally 40 hours of their time. That's, it, that's all they risk. A business owner risks everything. They risk their time. They risk their money. They risk their legalities because it's easy to get sued in, in a lot of different businesses. They risk everything. And so it's not the time that pays them. It's not even the effort that pays them. It's the risk. The more risk you give in life, the more you get paid. It's risk that pays, not time, not effort, risk. So you have to start risking a little if you wanna become a millionaire. Now these systems have truly helped me remove distractions and become a millionaire. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like a more step-by-step -step training on how to build a business, I'm gonna leave that below one of my best trainings in the description below. You can click on that and watch it right now. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.